Imagine a place where you could see illness in the body and its electrical field before it became a serious threat to your life or well-being. That's what Dr. Harry Oldfield brings to the world of medicine and healing. His polycontrast interference photography device, known as PIP, has aided healers and medical doctors alike in diagnosing illness, mental imbalances, and more. PIP also allows us to look into an otherwise invisible world of vibrant, living, dynamic energy surrounding people, places, plants, and animals, even the mysterious subject of crystal healing. You are not your average little bear as a child. You were asking grandma some questions kids at three years old don't normally ask. That's correct. Can yes. you talk a little bit about how it began, how your journey began? Well, my uh, uh, recollection uh, was of my grandma. Uh, she always thought I was a little bit special. Uh, I mean, I have two brothers. She also thought they were special too. They went on to do, uh, have gone on to do some great things. Um, but uh, one day, uh, she was babysitting uh, for, uh, for, for me. Actually, I think it's really cruel, actually, to sit on babies. There should be a law against it, <laughs> it but I survived the sitting. <laughs> and she's um, watching me play in her drawing room. Uh, the, the cur uh, through um, a gap in the curtains, a sunbeam is coming in, she, she was explaining. I can't recollect any of this. It's her recollection I'm going by. And the sunbeam's coming through the curtains, hitting a, a, a spot on the carpet. I'm putting my finger in the carpet, looking at the light, crawling around all directions around the beam. And then I stand up and I walk towards the window, looking very curious, and I start tapping the window. And then she got concerned because I started to uh, tap the window quite hard. She said, now Harold, now she always called me Harold if I'd done anything naughty. It's normally Harry, you see. <laughs> Harold, what do you think you're doing, young man? And apparently I turned to her and, say, uh, and said to her, Nana, why is it when the, uh, uh, the light comes through the glass, it doesn't break? Good question from mm. a three-year-old. Yeah. And uh, I bet she didn't have the answer, or did uh, she? a week or so before, <laughs> I'd been playing in the garden with little stones, and I'd broken a window pane by watching a stone go through, obviously, glass. Right. I saw the I remembered the experience of the stone going through the glass ah. and breaking it. But seeing this beam of light coming through, uh, and to ha have that kind of th thought process, she thought it was rather special for a three-year-old. Yes. Well, so I then she started to nurture me. She started nurturing you, and you were nurtured, and your, your curiosity was fostered. And by the way, we're out here among at the clearing of the breakfast crowd. And just in case beautiful. anyone sees it, it's a beautiful day, and there's a little squirrel that's in love with you. Oh, well. And you're not even bribing him with sunflower no, seeds. So if we see, no, it could be a female squirrel. It could be. <laughs> if, so, <I'm> <laughs> if any of you see a bushy so little sweet. tail popping yeah, up above uh, his she's shoulder. Taken a, oh, he's taken a liking to me, yes. and I've got nothing here to bribe them with. You know? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> okay, so... As you move through into your curiosity, you end up in the world of science, hardcore science. I, I did indeed. Before that, though, there was an incident when I was t uh, uh, 11, 12 years old, where my parents suddenly got through a, a hundred pound check, okay? Now, we are talking like early 60s, no, maybe late, uh, uh, yeah, early 60s. And that is like equivalent of what be a thousand dollars today, a thousand right, pounds or something right. like this. And my um, made out to Harry Oldfield, you know, and my father and mother astonished. What have you been doing, Harry? This is what from a food, a um, a fish food company that make goldfish flakes, that kind of thing. And uh, they, in the letter, they said, "Thank you very much for your re uh, presentation of your research. We are very interested." And here is a hundred pounds for your time and trouble, young man. Thank you very much. Now, um, I was able to take my family on a holiday that summer huh. with that money and everything. They opened up a little bank account for me. I'm 12 years old, Barclays, I remember very well. Oh, I shouldn't advertise, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I've still stuck with Barclays all these years, actually, <laughs> from that incident. The thing was, that, uh, that company went on to make uh, shrimps into a, a freeze-dried, for, I had invented a way of growing these shrimps to a full size in captivity um, with a special formula. Uh, I, in my first microscope, I looked at their mouth size and I knew they are algae, green little plants. 
and I found a substitute for their mouth size that they could possibly eat, which was yeast, brewer's yeast. Huh. And I put this in their growing water, and they grew to full-size shrimps uh, on um, a byproduct of beer. And some of them look very happy indeed. <laughs> now, did your parents We're know? We're Brits, you know. <laughs> yeah, Brits, of course. <laughs> Quite fond of beer. <laughs> or ours is a little bit warmer than yours. Yeah, well, that's your social mm. structure, it's though, so isn't it? It is a social structure. Yes. Well, so how did you, um, how, did your parents know about this experiment? Well, they noticed a lot of jars on their windsill, as right. usual. Right. And um, there was an incident where um, I, I was hatching out um, uh, stick insects, and I had all these eggs. and. I, I'd been keeping them uh, as the uh, stick insects uh, lay the eggs. Uh, I was putting them in the airing cupboard to hatch. Uh, and I, I spilt some of the eggs and they went down in the cracks. I forgot about them. <laughs> Three months later, <laughs> there's screams from my mother as she's pulling stick insects out of her, her, her uh, laundered underwear. Oh, no. Yes, yes. Okay, so they were used to you. They were used to you by yeah. this time. And, yeah, and they now, were. And now I it's was paying looked off. upon even eccentric by my parents. I, mm. <laughs> I bet you were. And today, okay? Um, well, uh, I'm still, <laughs> you're still <laughs> probably looked upon uh, uh, in the same way by my family members, but in a great, in a nice, respectful way. Yes. Well, as you moved, uh, as you moved into your studies and then decided to pursue yes. biology, which is not a surprise considering the things you've already told us. Um, how was your mind structured at that time? Were you always trying to go outside of the box, or were you trying to discipline it in the classic sciences? More I was so. always, shall we say. Uh, respectful of the discipline of science, you know, and the, uh, the, the, the protocols that you, you followed, uh, and how to evaluate information, how to structure your ideas, and this was an absolute fantastic way of disciplining what was a very, very active young mind. I'm speaking to me in the third person. As right. a child, right. I don't know if I would want to have been my father. <laughs> uh, because, uh, you know, he had infinite patience. And uh, uh, he was a, a London bus driver. And uh, I was the first of his family ever go to, ever, to ever go to university. And uh, uh, I, later my brothers followed, of course. But um, it was a very special uh, responsibility. So I did a good job. Mm -hmm. to make him proud mm -hmm. and my mother of course. Mm -hmm. And how long after that did you start splitting away from what you had traditionally been taught and going into these realms you're it in now happened, which are so profound? I went into science teaching uh, after my degree for, for, for uh, a, 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 a short time period and um, I was always uh, in uh, equivalent to your high school looked up I was even called the mad prof even in then days by the the, the, the students. Uh, uh, I, what, what, it was a little incident where I blew up a science laboratory one day, <laughs> you know, which actually the local school and government forgave me for because it was a total accident. I but I did blow up the laboratory. My reputation was set with these young kids. They were fighting to get on my course uh, uh, for, for their uh, uh, studies in science. Uh, I, I tried to make science alive for them uh, as, uh, and for them to love it as much as I loved it.